Travel consideration provided by. Frustrated that clean clothes you want to wear always seem to need an iron? Try Bounce Wrinkle Guard Dryer Sheets. The Bounce Wrinkle Guard shorts have fewer wrinkles and static and more softness. It's the world's first mega sheet that does the job of three dryer sheets. Bounce out wrinkles. Hey. So have you joined the Boss Family workouts recently with Twitch and Allison? I mean, we love those two from So You Think You Can Dance, Ellen, and Dancing with the Stars. But now they have teamed up with the American Heart Association. But my heart? Well, it's happening now. And Governor Greg Abbott announcing plans to reopen more businesses, salons, barbershops, gyms, when they'll be opening their doors. A plan to help San Antonio reopen the economy, how the city and county could help small businesses. A 66-year-old Bear County Jail inmate is dead after Sheriff Javier Salazar says his family removed him from life support after being diagnosed with COVID-19. I'm Devin Clark. We'll have details on that coming up. As more stores limit meat buying, we ask an expert, what's going on and what can you expect with prices? And a cold front is moving through South Texas as we speak. We'll talk about that, even some rain chances behind it. And another cold front in the forecast. All that coming up. And how one local elementary school is showing its appreciation for teachers with the Cinco de Mayo parade. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at five, gyms, salons, barbershops will soon be back in business. Governor Greg Abbott announcing his next effort to reopen the Texas economy and his plans are taking motion this Friday on May 8th. Nail, hair, tanning, beauty salons and barbershops can all reopen, but there are some strict guidelines to follow. Each stylist must limit to one customer at a time and must be six feet apart from other stylists. Anyone waiting for service must be six feet apart or must wait outdoors or in their cars. Stylists and customers are required to wear face coverings and stations must be thoroughly sanitized between appointments. Gyms are also allowed to reopen on May 18th. Indoor facilities, though, must limit occupancy to 25% and must maintain social distancing. Showers and locker rooms must remain closed and all the equipment must be disinfected after every use. That includes personal equipment like yoga mats. Customers are required to wear gloves while they work out and those gloves must cover their entire hand and fingers. Outdoor exercise groups or gyms must keep people six feet apart as well. The governor also went into details about lakes, beaches, rivers, river rafting. Groups are limited to no more than five people or the number of people in one household. They must stay six feet apart from other groups like state parks. Mass are also required at any of these locations. As for bars, Governor Abbott said that he hopes to speak with owners about their strategies to reopen. So far, though, no date has been set. You can find all of this information right now on KSAT.com. And here at home, the economic transition team presenting its own plan to reopen the local economy to city council and commissioner's courts. Our Garrett Berger has been tracing these updates for weeks now. And Garrett, does it work that what the governor has already laid out? Well, the team says that its recommendations do fit with what the governor put out in his report for reopening Texas. So their suggestions fit within that same framework. So this is not a completely new plan on opening up locally. So one of their main ideas is cut that they came up with is a marketing campaign with a greater safer together pledge that local businesses can sign to help build consumer confidence. The plans also provide a checklist for numerous industries on the best ways for them to safely reopen and operate. It also recommends the city and county help get critical health and protective equipment to small businesses. The San Antonio city manager says that recommendation is already underway. The city's begun procuring thermometers, hand sanitizer and face coverings to help businesses with 25 or fewer employees. In all, about $1.4 million worth of equipment that they'll package up and distribute. And targeting between 5,600 and 6,000 businesses with a thermometer, um, um, uh, a gallon or two or three gallons of uh, sanitizer and fa uh, mace, uh, face coverings. We will be working with the chambers to help secure volunteers to distribute um, and show some unity. 
The Economic Transition Team also recommended working with the nonprofit San Antonio Economic Development Foundation to help make other recommendations for some supporting small businesses happen. Now, coming up at six, hear from the tourism agency for the city, Visit San Antonio, about what they think about the pending reopening of the Alamo City. Live downtown, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. A 66 year old Bear County jail inmate officials say had underlying medical conditions died. Sheriff Javier Salazar says he believes Clifford Child's death was due to COVID-19 complications. He says Child's health had been sharply declining for a few days, and yesterday his family made the difficult decision to remove him from life support. The sheriff says Childs was tested for COVID-19 as a precaution on April 17th after being admitted to the hospital for other conditions. Before the results came back, he was taken back to jail because the conditions he was hospitalized for improved. The next day, Child's positive results came back and he was moved to the infirmary, then taken back to the hospital as his condition worsened before he died. The sheriff says Childs had an extensive criminal history, was most recently awaiting trial in connection with two murders in 2017. It is unclear how Childs contracted the disease, but Salazar says several other BCSO inmates are still in the hospital as well. I believe we've still got four inmates in the hospital uh, dealing with COVID issues. Uh, we're hoping that those will make a full recovery. I don't believe that any of them were to the extent that Mr. Childs was. Uh, however, they are in the right place. Sheriff Salazar emphasizes that inmates are members of the community who deserve the same COVID-19 resources as other members of society. If an inmate were to become sick after leaving the jail, they can call the same COVID-19 hotline for information. That number 210-207-5779. Three stories to know today. A man is dead after he was shot by a San Antonio police officer overnight. It happened around 1.30 in the morning on Five Palms Drive and Shoreview Place. According to San Antonio police, William McManus, the, the police chief, William McManus, the man was one of three men who were approached by the officer about vehicle burglaries in the area. At some point, one of the men and the officer got into a fight. The man took the man's the man took the officer's taser and then used it on the officer. McManus says that's when the officer shot and killed the man. At least one other suspect was tracked down and charged with evading arrest. We're also working to learn the name of a man who was fatally shot while allegedly trying to break into a car around three this morning. According to police, it all happened outside a home on Dealey Place. That's not far from South Flores Street. Police say gunfire exchange between the homeowner and the suspect. The suspect who was shot in the chest took off running didn't get very far. Officers found his body about a block away. A 26 year old man has been arrested on a murder charge. Trey Duncan is accused of the shooting death of 39 year old Reginald Adams. Police believe the two men were involved in a shootout at an apartment complex on Pecan Grove back on April 21st. Adams died at the scene. Duncan was shot in the abdomen and was taken to the hospital. He is now charged with murder. President Donald Trump making a promise the country will reopen. But experts are warning quickly relaxing coronavirus restrictions could cost tens of thousands of American lives. Karen Kafa has the latest from Washington. In the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, President Trump has one clear goal. We're going to build the greatest economy in the world again, and it's going to happen pretty fast. From parks and beaches to retail shops and restaurants, by this Sunday, at least 42 states will have relaxed some coronavirus restrictions. We're opening up our country again. Yet health experts have a dire warning. According to one prediction, the country's coronavirus death toll could nearly double if states reopen too soon. How many deaths and how much suffering are you willing to accept to get back to what you want to be some form of normality sooner rather than later? A poll from Monmouth University released Tuesday finds nearly two thirds of Americans are concerned states are lifting regulations too quickly. And the fundamental question, which we're not articulating, is how much is a human life worth? President Trump remains confident mitigation efforts will slow the spread of the virus. They're going to be social distancing and they're going to be washing their hands and they're going to be doing the things that you're supposed to do. Still, governors across the country struggle to find the balance between economic strife and human life. The faster we reopen, the lower the economic cost, but the higher the human cost because the more lives lost. 
That, my friends, is the decision we are really making. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. Human testing for an experimental COVID-19 vaccine is now underway in the U.S. Pharmaceutical company Pfizer and German biotechnology company BioNTech announcing the test run today. It is the third vaccine trial to begin for human testing since March. Last month, scientists at Oxford University started testing a vaccine. The National Institutes of Health started human testing on that in March. Amazon facing criticism from a former top executive over its actions during the pandemic. Tim Bray, the now former vice president, quit his job on Friday after Amazon allegedly fired whistleblowers who shared concerns about the spread of COVID-19 at Amazon warehouses. In a lengthy letter posted online, he goes into detail about what led up to the firings, the employees all being minorities or women, and why he ultimately resigned. Amazon denies those claims, saying the employees were fired for violating social distancing guidelines and internal policies. Starbucks is planning to reopen 85% of its U.S. stores by the end of the week. Dine-in services will still be off limits, though. drive through orders and orders made through the app or Uber Eats will be allowed. The company hopes to reopen 90% of its store by June. Back here at home, North Star Mall reopening its doors for the first time in weeks today. The mall will be one will be open rather from 11 a.m. until 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday on Sundays from noon until six. The food court limited to carry out only. The mall has added hand sanitizing stations, has social distancing guidelines it's abiding by. The shops at La Quintera also reopening today as well. The San Antonio Botanical Garden celebrating its 40th anniversary by reopening today for the community. The Botanical Garden says that over the last two months it has had to restructure its operations because of the pandemic. And some of those changes include monitoring capacity, cleaning more than ever and requiring masks for anyone who visits. After figuring all that out, they were just waiting for the right time to reopen. So we really felt the time was right to open for one, one major reason is people need nature more than ever. We all need a dose of nature. I mean, to get out into the fresh air, to feel human again, is essential to us as human beings. And gardens can provide that around the country. If you would like to visit the Botanical Garden, you must purchase tickets online. The website is sabot.org. And here's a live look outside. A little, it kind of looks murky out there from this camera on the south side of town. You see some sunshine, but there's some cloud cover mixed in, and we do have a little bit of smoke that's back in the air today. So that's been out there giving us a little extra layer of haze. Looking at our temperatures, uh, in, according to our weather watchers in their backyards, Warren's backyard in Del Rio, 88. 79 in Rock Springs, 83 in Leon Springs. We've got some 70s and 80s out there at this at this hour and changes are happening as we speak because a cold front is moving southward. So the wind is shifting northerly out of the north, 5 to 15 miles per hour. Some increasing clouds can't rule out some showers tonight. We'll talk about that and another cold front coming up. With meatpacking plants forced to halt or slow production, grocery stores are now limiting the amount of meat, pork, chicken you can buy. Up next, what that means for the supply and for your wallet. But first, let's take a look at how parents and students showed a little appreciation for teachers at Will Rogers Academy today with a special Cinco de Mayo themed parade. We are having a Cinco de Mayo parade. Hopefully we'll see all the kids. I'm hoping they're going to be excited and they're going to be jumping up and down, just like we'll be excited to see them. It's Teacher Appreciation Week. I like it that I get to see my teachers. Here at Will Rogers, we have the most amazing teachers. Love that I saw the teachers coming by, everyone happy. I miss their smiling face, and I love working with every one of them. See my happy face? So that they can't see me, they can see my car has one. <laughs> happy to see them. And we appreciate everything they did. I like, we like the way they, they decorated their cars. We've got the flowers, streamers, balloons, sombreros, tons and tons of signs just letting them know we love our kids, we're here, we're a family, we're united. Now to the dinner table. As you shop for groceries, you will likely see limits on how many steaks, pork chops, and chickens you can buy at a time. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz talks with an industry expert about what's going on and what you can expect at the meat counter now.
Costco is the latest store to limit how much fresh meat you can buy, something HEB and other grocers did too to help assure more shoppers have access. So what's going on? The bottom line is we have a we have a bottleneck in our packing plant system. Dr. David Anderson is an agriculture economist at Texas A&M. He says there is no shortage of livestock. We were set up this year to produce a record amount of beef, pork, and chicken. But the coronavirus forced some processing plants to close or slow production. What we really have are tighter supplies. What can consumers expect on their pocketbook? Well, certainly, we're, you know, on the wholesale side, we're certainly seeing higher prices. He says the wholesale price of a box of choice cuts is now double what it was three months ago. And at the retail level, Anderson says expect to see fewer choices for a while and climbing prices. I think I already notice higher prices at retail at grocery stores. While Anderson expects the pandemic's effect on the meat supply chain to linger, he says there is no reason for panic hoarding. Oh, I hope not. Um, you know, let's not make this like toilet paper. But there's going to be plenty for everybody. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. You know, it goes without saying, COVID-19 has impacted all of our lives in one way or another, from the way we work, the way we socialize, to how we help others. It is why our KSAT community partners are hosting Giving Tuesday to help 36 organizations in our area who need help now more than ever. If you'd like to support one of these nonprofits in any way, you can go to ksatcommunity.com. All right, so yesterday at this time I was saying it's too soon for all this heat. <laughs> Today I'm like, all right, this is more like it. Exactly. Yeah, getting better. Yeah, we were well into the 90s yesterday. We made it up to 97 for the high temperature today. Uh, quite a contrast, at least locally. You look farther south of San Antonio, and that's where, well, we crank up the heat a bit. But a cold front is moving through South Texas as we speak, and it's basically paving the way for some changes. So you look across the state, you look at the readings, a good chunk of Texas in the 70s and 80s now. Even Austin, 77, Midland, 82, 71, and Amarillo. You look down into South Texas, and that's where we see those readings a little bit higher. You get into Beeville, 95, Victoria, 92, Catula, 93, Laredo at 98 degrees. Big difference between 70s in the hill country and 90s farther to the south of town. Even Corpus is at 88 degrees. It's because of this cold front that's slowly pushing southward and the changes are gradual to take place behind this front. So 73 Fredericksburg but 93 in Catula, all within our viewing area. We've got that big temperature difference and you can see the wind shift as well. A lot of us are feeling that northerly breeze at this hour at about 10 to 20 miles per hour, so it's got a bit of a kick to it, but not everybody is it's still along the coastline. We got the wind coming off the Gulf of Mexico, so you have yet to see that cold front and dew points are definitely slow to respond to this cool front that's moving southward. It's dry in the hill country. Comfortable air with dew points in the 50s and even some upper 40s. But then you get along the coastal plain and dew points are still right around 70 degrees. So a gradual drop off in the dew points and the overall humidity. Now you look at the rest of the week and into the weekend and by and large, it's not going to be all that humid. I mean, we'll have a few little brief moments of humidity late Thursday, early Friday. But otherwise, uh, dew points are going to be down, and a lot of us will be enjoying those uh, dew points in the 40s and a lack of humidity. So very different out there the rest of the week. And you look at the satellite and radar, you see that mixture of clouds and sun outside, and even you can almost pick out the cold front here as well just by looking at the cloud pattern and signature on the satellite imagery. We've got the typical showers and storms developing in the higher terrain of Mexico. There are some indications that some of that may just brush along some of our border communities, especially in Webb County. But what I want to focus on is a little impulse of energy later tonight, and that gives us about a 30% chance of a few showers late late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Don't be surprised if we see a little bit of activity popping up on the radar screen, maybe an isolated thunderstorm, but we're not expecting anything strong or severe. If if you get hit by one of these showers, consider yourself lucky one of those situations and that'll be through about sunrise tomorrow and then the sky is going to clear out again. So there's that slight chance of rain tonight into early tomorrow. Otherwise, not all that humid tomorrow it will be 63 in the morning, 85 by the afternoon and east northeasterly breeze at 5 to 15. And then we get into Thursday 
partly cloudy, 86. Okay, so pretty close to average for this time of year. We get into Friday, and it looks like that cold front's going to arrive in the morning on Friday. Temperatures probably right around 80 degrees in the afternoon, maybe an isolated shower or two, but look what that does for the weekend. That next cold front there drops our mornings into the lower 50s, Saturday and Sunday and afternoons, 70s to near 80. How's that? Wow, what a change. We like it. <laughs> All right, so, you know, when you talk about this pandemic, you talk about COVID-19, you get a sense just how international it is from some of the Spurs players. That's right, and as we told you first last night on the night beat, Tony Parker directly affected by the coronavirus. When we come back, we'll talk about how his family had to battle the disease and why Andy Dalton chose the Dallas Cowboys. Coming back. Former Spurs great Tony Parker says two members of his family tested positive for the coronavirus but are doing better now. In an interview with the undefeated, Parker said both his father-in-law and sister-in-law tested positive for the coronavirus. His father-in-law in Paris, his sister-in-law in France as well. Parker admits he was worried for the first two weeks and it put a lot of stress on his family. But since that time, they have both tested negative. Parker married Alexa Francine. Exo Francia should say back in 2014 and they had two sons and obviously her family has remained in France where Parker also owns a basketball team as well that like the NBA has been shuttered for the, now due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Parker says he's remained in his home here in San Antonio during the outbreak and is happy his in-laws have now recovered. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law. After signing his one year contract to play for the Dallas Cowboys, Andy Dalton is now talking. The former Bengals quarterback was cut to make room for national champion Heisman Trophy winner Joe Burrow to take his place in Cincinnati. And that has given him the opportunity to return to Texas where he once starred for TCU before the Bengals drafted him back in 2011. Speaking on an ESPN podcast, Dalton, who's now 32, told us why he chose the Cowboys over five others offers he had to play and that new head coach Mike McCarthy had a big role in his decision to suit up up in Dallas as a backup to Dak Prescott at quarterback. Yeah, I wanted to join a high-class organization a team that's ready to win and um, and be with, with, with Mike McCarthy, who's uh, this, this, his history with quarterbacks. You know, I think it gives me a chance to come to a, a new place, a chance to learn, to help Dak out, Dak out any way I can, and, um, you know, and then just to be an asset for this team. Obviously, I, I bring a lot of experience and and it can bring a lot to the table. So uh, I'm here to help this team win and uh, help in any way I can. Now, there are those that believe that signing Dalton was a way for the Cowboys to create a quarterback controversy to force Dak Prescott to sign a long-term contract. The Cowboys insist that is not the case. How about this? Running back Frank Gore has agreed to a one-year contract to play for the New York Jets at the age of 36. He will join a Jets backfield. It also includes Le'Veon Bell. It's really the reason why the Jets signed Gore is because of Adam Gase. Is, since Gore played for him in Miami in 2018, Gore turns 37 next Thursday and is third in the NFL's career rushing list with 15,269 yards, trailing only Nimitz Smith. 18,355 yards in the late Walter Payton with 16,726 yards. Gore spent last season in Buffalo where he ran for a career low 599 yards in 16 games and only two touchdowns. They've had a lot of injury problems, so they want to shore that up right now. But again, all this is on hold until we find out if the regular season kicks off on time. Yep. We still wait for answers. You got it. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. All right, so the next few days will be near average in terms of high temperatures, mid 80s, maybe a few isolated showers tonight and first thing tomorrow morning. Then a cold front hits on Friday and that drops us to near 80 Friday. But look at the upcoming weekend, some sunshine, 76 only for the high on Saturday. Wow, nice. Thank you so much, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5. World News is up next. We'll see you back here at 6.